Now we're going on to a big collection of Noble's tombs. Lots of my favourites in here. Um, the Noble's tombs are sold in groups, ticket groups, and um, uh, some of the groups are sort of like go there, go there, and others are like, yeah, they're okay, and others are like, um, yeah, okay. So, um, the ones I'm going to start with, Rec Marais and Senefa, I think are a very good group because they're quite different, whereas some of the other ticket groups are very similar. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, if I was putting them in ticket groups, I'd put something like Rec Marais, Mena and Ramos as a ticket group um, because that they are, you know, so different in style and um, yet they would give from different periods and things like that. Um, <clears throat> but the, the way the uh, Antiquities Department have, have done them um, has been different. So let's start. Sefer. Um Now he was Mayor of Thebes, overseer of the Garden of Armon. Reign of Amenhotep III, so uh, Amenhotep II. So we're talking at the beginning of the New Kingdom. And the fact that he was overseer of the garden is very, very important when you see inside his tomb. Now, in fact, funnily enough, what you see is the burial chamber, not the offering chapel. Normally, burial chambers aren't decorated. Um, all the decoration is in the offering chapel, which would have been open, and everybody would have gone there. But the burial chamber is only open once, and you put the body in there. Um, end of. Um, but this one is decorated. Um, some things to look out for in here uh, are the double heart amulet, which is very nice. The um, now, as uh, Muslims do a pilgrimage to Mecca. The ancient Egyptians would always like to do a pilgrimage to Abydos um, because this was the seat of Osiris's burial um, where Seti did the Osirium. You know, it's a terribly significant um, place. Now, not everybody could do that, so um, you would paint it in your tomb or you'd commemorate the fact that you did it by painting it in your tomb. Um, there's some, uh, it's really quite sweet to see that the affection between the family. Um, of Senefa and, and his wife and children. He's possibly buried in uh, KV 42. Um, the, the, you know, one of these things that not for, for sure, sure, but uh, um, he was quite important. So this is the tomb. Now you see the ceiling is not flat and finished. It's all. Um, curves and bumps and lumps and the artist has taken advantage of this by painting this uh, vine on the ceiling and in the middle of the vine is a lovely canopy which Senefa and his family obviously sat under to keep in the shade and were plucking grapes and uh, enjoying the Garden of Armour. It's lovely isn't it? Um, there is uh, Senefa you see the big earrings that he's wearing, and you see the double heart amulet. You remember I talked about the heart in the pot in Del Medina? See, little two hearts there. Um, and then he's got various people pouring libations over him, making him offerings. He's got his family enjoying it all. Um, it's a really, really lovely, colourful tomb. And w when you climb down to it, um, it, it, you know, kids quite love it because this is their picture uh, in their mind of how tombs are supposed to be. You aren't supposed to walk in a door. You know, you're supposed to climb down some steps and go through a corridor. And, you know, so they really, really enjoy this tomb very much. Um, Rec Murray on the same ticket. Um, oh my God, there's so much in this tomb. Right, he was the vizier under Tutmosis the Third. Now, um, remember at Karnak, his uncle's full store, user Armin, was found. Um, he, he was also another vizier, and viziers are prime ministers. 
and they are responsible for everything. Everything. So in his tomb, Rex Murray shows all the things he's responsible for. And uh, it's just about every conceivable thing you can think of of Egyptian life. Um, tribute from foreign lands, so we've got a lot of foreigners and exotic animals and skins and ivory tusks and so forth. Um, you've got the uh, legal side of things um, and punishments and um, people making wine and having their hair cut and stuff like that. You've got his hats, very nice hats, a pond, lake, and trees, very pleasant. And the manufacturing, um, just about everything that you can ever think of that they made is shown in this tomb. And this tomb has contributed enormously to our knowledge of exactly how they did things. Um, and it, it, the, the only problem with it is that when you get into that part of the tomb, it's very high and you really do get a crick in your neck looking at it. You can get hold of um, line drawings of the um, uh, tomb um, online and uh, these are worthwhile having a look at so you can identify them rather than you know you come out of there with this enormous neck ache. Um, right at the end he's shown making offerings to various gods and we've also got the funerary banquet where they get very drunk by the way. So here we've got some scenes going on. Now they're making planks of wood here. They're drilling holes in the sides of a bed to string the uh, uh, rope across so that they can it'll be a comfortable um, thing to rest on. Um, uh, here he's cutting wood again here. He's planing it. Um, they're painting it here. Um, uh, you know, there's cots being made. <laughs> you know, and that's just one tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of it. Um, here's the tribute. You can see people just wearing animal skins, a different skin colours from the Egyptians. We've got a baboon here. We've got an enormous tusk of ivory there. There's um, further along. There's a giraffe with a little monkey on its neck. We've got some ostrich eggs there, and you see the ostrich plume. Um, here they're making wine. They're picking the grapes off the vines taking them in baskets and uh, these guys are standing holding on to straps while they um, the grapes are poured in and they trample them away and there's a spigot just there see the spigot and he collects up the wine and puts it into the wine jars amazing isn't it and here we have a hunt going on this is them making a shrine can see all the work going on and they're painting it, carving it. Um, it's got the typical shrine shape. Um, this, this is a very normal shrine shape. Here they're melting metal over a very, very hot fire. There's another scene where guys, I, I actually know, it is this one, um, but the photo doesn't quite show it, that they're actually pressing on bellows here to blow hot uh, to air to make this fire very 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 hot so that the metal in that crucible will melt and they're holding it with these t sticks so they don't burn their hands and here's some of the staff that, that you see what what you do Egyptian art is you don't just show a box because if you show a box with its contents then the contents that are there available for the tomb owner as well. Now, remember at Karnak I said the heads of the necklaces had been damaged by the Amarna period. You see you've got falcon-headed uh, heads on the necklaces and that's why they were damaged. We've got a mirror here, we've got jars of, of unguents here and sandals and, you know, just about everything, fans. 
Um, there is an amazing amount going on in this tomb. And you can spend a long, long time looking at everything in there. Now, here is um, the funerary banquet. It's divided up into the men and women. These are the women, the paler colour. Skin colour is always paler on ladies um, because they don't have to go out into the fields. And there's actually a, um, a bit here where they're, uh, they're wanting to deliberately get drunk to experience the divine. So they, they get mystical visions. So um, uh, one of the ladies here is saying, is it marked, you know, is it the right thing to get drunk? And the mark is turned around to indicate, yes, it is. Um, and they actually had um, sort of like um, designated drivers, so somebody whose role is to stay sober, to look after you as you experience the divine. So um, these ladies all sitting there getting nicely drunk. They've got cones of wax on their head, which are supposed to melt down and perfume them. I cannot think of a more messier thing to happen to your best wig, but there you go. Um, and young girls are putting floral necklaces on them, giving them wine, um, offering them food. There's some music going on as well. So, big party. Um, now we move on to a second ticket group, Mina and Nark. Uh, Mina is a scribe of the field, so he's a slightly later time, Tutmosis IV, Amen Hotep III, and um, very, very lively daily life scenes and a lot of natural world scenes. So here we go. Um, now, what they've got is they're measuring the height and depth of the wheat there. And then taxes can be assessed. And that's what he's doing as a scribe. He's recording down what they've measured so that they can then decide um, how much to charge the owners of the field. And here we've got his um, Ferrari waiting to take him off. One suspects that he probably couldn't afford a chariot like that in real life, but he was determined to have it in his afterlife. Um, and there's the offerings being made to him, some um, fruit and um, uh, ducks and uh, ostrich eggs and so forth. Yeah. Nice time. Now here is how after they've uh, threshed the uh, wheat, they're tossing it in the air so that the chaff will blow away and the seed grain is left behind. Um, if you ever go down to Cairo and go around the Pharaonic village there, they act out these things and it's like watching Mina and Nark come to life. It is uh, quite, uh, well, it's quite amazing. Um, it's a nice little tomb. Th these are quite small. These are quite small. Um, but, but they are nice to look around. And, and here's the threshing going on. You see that the, the cattle are being encouraged to trample on it and the man is uh, pushing it down so the cattle can go on and, and uh, separate the grain from the chaff. Um, and this is a very, very famous little scene. You see these two naked girls are having a big argument, a big, lot of hair pulling going on there. And they are gleaning in the fields and they've forgotten it in the middle of having this argument um, and uh, the, the guys are carry on taking the wheat along um, there's a guy sitting under the tree they're looking quite exhausted I, if you've got a family I have to say you will find your children enjoy these noble scenes tombs much more than they enjoy the royal ones because they don't have to have it explained to them. They can just look at the pictures. Um, whereas a royal tomb, um, you know, chapters from the Book of the Dead or the Book of the Sacred Cow, you know, someone's got to tell them what God they're looking at and what on earth is supposed to be going on. And they're like, is it another royal tomb? Whereas these ones, they're small, hardly any visitors there. Um, and, you know, they can just enjoy them.
Now this is the, the scenes of natural life. Do you see the cat there and the little rat climbing up the stalks and the birds? And he's uh, hunting in the marshes and his wife, the wife and his daughters are gathering lotuses from the river and uh, everybody's having a great time on the boat and he's spear some fish and oh, what a great Sunday day out, eh? Really, really nice. Now, Nart, um, he, he doesn't actually mention who is his pharaoh, but we think it's the same period, Tutmosis IV, Amen Hotep III. Um, a very famous scene of the three girl musicians, uh, the cat under the chair, wine production, and the clap net. This is about bringing order to chaos. Um, you remember I talked about how we the the net is bringing order to the um, uh, chaos of the marshes in the temple of Hatshepsut. Well, this is also happening in a noble's tomb. So here we have these uh, trampling on the grapes down there, the wine jars being filled, and there's the juice coming down, and he's collecting it. And there's the guys picking all the grapes from there. And there's the clap net, bringing order to chaos. Um, hanging up some ducks there. Feeling quite hungry now. Right, next set of group, uh, tombs is the Remose um, thing. Now, actually, Remose is quite a good one for accessibility. Uh, some of the others, you have to clamber up the hill a bit. Um, Sneffel and Rechmeray especially are quite high up the hill. Men are not a bit, but Remos is quite near the car park. So if you've got somebody with some walking difficulties, uh, this is quite a good set of noble tombs to go to. Um, Remos is a vizier, um, like Rechmeray, but he's under Amenhotep III and Art Martin. So, in his tomb, we see the two different art styles, and we see how Art Narton stuff was all hammered out um, after his revolution um, failed, and everybody returned from Amarna and Tutankhamun to the tomb, took the throne. Um, so, uh, this is quite an interesting tomb for um, that. It, it's also gorgeous. It has these limestone figures which are, you know, Nefertiti's head, um, Tutankhamun's dog mask, and these gorgeous um, funerary banquet scenes. It was never finished, um, maybe because they decamped to Amarna. So it still has the grid lines. Now they have this canon of proportion. Um, you know, your, your arms should be three and your shoulders five or six, depending on male or female, and your whole thing 18, and it, it's one from your nose to your chin, and all this kind of stuff. So they drew grid lines on the walls, and then they would draw the uh, uh, thing following the grid lines, and um, then a, a senior scribe would come along and correct it. So there's still evidence of these changes, the grid lines and so forth going on, um, which is quite interesting, especially if you're into art, um, it, you, you'll find that quite, quite fascinating. So this is this limestone carving. Have you ever seen anything like it in your life? Look at the detail on those wigs. It is just incredible. Now, when you freshly carve limestone, you can almost cut it with your fingernail. It's very soft, but it hardens. It gets a skin on it. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is a, a tricky thing to um, carve, but not that tricky. It's not a granite or anything like that. And there are some local craftsmen in the area that copy this. And they are good. Some are bad, um, uh, but some are good. And some of them can make some excellent reproductions of this stuff. Um, you do get involved in a lot of haggling, trying to bargain with them. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're with me, I will guide you through that, tell you approximate prices, and tell you when you 
are paying way, way, way over the top, and when you're, you've got, you know, that, that's a fair price. Um, but it just shows how these skills have come down over the years. Also in this tomb is um, a painted scene, again, very, very, very famous, um, with these mourners down here, with a little girl, naked girl, apprentice, and they are looking up at the um, sledge that's carrying along the shrine that has the mummy in it. And they are um, sort of shouting, screaming, wailing. Um, then you've got the people in the funerary procession. And along here you've got people carrying things, chairs and chests and so forth. Now, um, another one in this group of three is a uh, user head. There are two user heads, um, but this is the TT56 user head. And he's the scribe for Count for Bread. Um, and it has extensive Christian graffiti in it. And it's appalling. Um, it's really, really bad. You know, if, you, if you've got small children and you've got this really nice wallpaper and then they come along there with their felt tip pens and draw something, it's exactly what it looks like. It's not good at all. They sort of try to brighten it up with these appalling drawings. Um, but scenes of cattle branding, uh, we're under Eamon Hotep II, Chaos of the Hunt and the Abydos Pilgrimage are all in there. So, Remember when we were in the Ramesseum and I was pointing out he had the reins of the horse tied round his waist and that you get this in Noble's tomb, as you can see, it's here. Um, so he's obviously quite proud of himself that he's quite some sportsman and, and uh, he's able to um, uh, control his horses like that. And uh, then you've got, uh, you know, all the hunt going on. But um, this has actually never finished because, you see, you've got all the lines here for the hieroglyphs and uh, nobody ever filled it in. Um, one of the famous scenes in his tomb is people are waiting to have their hair cut. And um, in the villages, especially in Upper Egypt, you can see this happening. You get the itinerant barber who comes along and um, he gives you a, a, a haircut and a shave um, as he travels around. Um, and they're sort of sitting, you know, it's hot in Egypt and they're under the shade of the tree and they're waiting for their turn. Good Nick. Now, Kahemwet, the third one in this little group, um, he's the overseer of the granaries and royal scribe, Eamon Hotep III. So again, this high artistry period. Um, and he's shown, um, again, um, to do with grain and property boundaries. But um, they've also got this rather interesting snake-headed goddess in there. Um, you don't see her a lot, and that, that's quite, quite nice to see. Good carvings, good carvings. Um, so there you can see some of the carvings going on, um, holding some uh, birds and uh, um, the, the combs of wax on their hair and of wearing collars of gold. Um, and again, the sort of, um, you know, putting offerings in front of the vizier. Um, now, this... It's a, these are an interesting set of three, but, you know, if you're running out of time, you can skip them. Uh, he was a, a boarder in the Royal Nursery. He was under the of three, and um, his false door is painted red granite. Um, so here he is. Um, he's got a nice little pile of offerings. Do you see these cos lettuces here? Um, and growing here as well. And the lotus going round the wine jar. Now, apparently, lotus juice will give you a little bit of a natural high, and they would let it drift into the wine. And you know, it would be like early Coca Cola had actually had cocaine in it. Um, this is the same kind of thing, you know, a little bit of a blood. Um, and then we have some uh, musicians going along there. 
uh, Honsu, um, the Temple of Armont is not actually open to the public. It's one that needs special permission. Um, so this is quite nice to see this little scene of him worshipping at Montu, that he has, you know, the judgment scene and the funeral procession. Um, now, he was in the time of Ramses II, but he was the prophet at the temple of Tutmosis III. So you can get a picture of how long um, a particular temple had worship going on at it. So here's a boat with Konsu in it, and they're all off to Abydos to have the procession there. Now, this is actually a little bit interesting, because this is on the ceiling, um, and you see that it's got an egg in a nest, and it's got a, a locust, and um, there's all these birds around and everything like that. So this little naturalistic scene on the ceiling is it, it is quite nice. And the other user here, um, under Horemheb, I mean Ramses I and Seti I, another first prophet, uh, but this is um, Tutmosis I, uh, and it, it's very, very religious, very religious. Um, so lots of um, offerings in front of shrines. Um, quite a different style. You see, it's quite busy, um, quite glitzy. Um, not the simple style of the early 18th dynasty. Roy. If you ever come here and Roy is closed and I'm dead, that's because I'm buried there. I want this tomb. It's tiny, but it's gorgeous and it's so interesting. And it looks as though it's painted just yesterday. And it has this fantastic view. You stand up there and you look across the river and you can see the first pile on the car map. So location, location, location. Where do you want to have your tomb? Where the beautiful feast of the valley is going to go right past your door every year. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah, obviously you didn't have a lot of money to spend. It was only a royal scribe and it was a very tiny little tomb. But it is gorgeous, really gorgeous. Um, it's, uh, he was under Horum Head, and rather interestingly, in this tomb, there are two hearts being weighed against um, the Feather of Truth. Now, whether he and his wife died together or what, don't know. Um, it's also got some grey haired mourners in it. Now, normally, everybody depicted in the tomb, you know, the women have never had a child, they've got pert little breasts. Uh, you know, there's no flabby abdomens on the men, no pot bellies, everybody's young and virile with six packs. Um, because that's how you want to be for eternity. So to see grey haired mourners is quite interesting. And there is extensive use of spring onions as a decorative motif. Um, why spring onions? I don't know. Uh, why not flat? But they have got lots of onions for spring onions. So here's the tomb, isn't it gorgeous? Um, now, uh, you can see the um, scenes going along there. They're worshipping in front of shrines. And when they say the right things, they get through to the next bit. And then they get into the judgment. And you see the two parts? And then over here is them in front of Osiris. And down here is the funerary procession going along. And here are some scenes of everyday life um, in the fields and so forth. This is obviously him doing his job as a royal scribe. And look at that lovely uh, ceiling. Do be careful if you go in here and take your hat off because some of these ceilings have been ruined by hats. Um, but it's such a lovely little tomb. And you can see the door is just there. Um, so it's quite nice to um, get a photo if you can. And this, I've seen a line drawing of this, which shows a lot more detail. So unfortunately, a lot has fallen off the back wall. But this is Roy um, worshipping Horam Heb and his uh, wife uh, around here. And there's a niche here. And probably, uh, originally, there was a stele here. And this is where they would have left the offerings. The burial shaft is just down here. 
Um, and when I went there at this time, they were doing some restoration, which is why all that stuff was lying around. This is the, the funeral banquet going on here. And here are the spring onions. <laughs> oh, really, really funny. So there again, more of the funerary banquet, more spring onions. Um, this wall here is blank. Uh, so obviously never finished. And this is a detail. Um, and you can see he's wearing this very, very fine linen, um, a dense um, kilt protecting his privates, and then it's diaphanous. But hers is all diaphanous. And this gate with the gods has got Nefertum on it. Um, and we didn't see Nefertum at Karnak, his statue wasn't there. But I thought we'd sneak him in here so you can see Nefertum with the lotus flower on top of his head. And here's our lotus angel. <laughs> now, Shuroi, which is in the same ticket group, is actually very poor quality. It, good location again. Uh, he was a brazier carrier of armour, so he obviously had no money whatsoever. Um, and uh, it's from the Ramesside period. Now, although it's poor quality, I really like it because not every team can be good, can it? And you want to see some bad ones so you can compare. So here is some bad ones. I mean, look at this. It's so funny. Look at his head. It, it should be there, shouldn't it? You know, but he's, he's sort of... And look at this guy's head. They, they've, he's supposed to be balancing a box on top of his head. But um, they, they drew his head and then they realised they've got to fit a box in. And the struts of it is <laughs> it's just terrible. But is it cute? Um, I, I really like it. Now, this particular wall, I have a suspicion, when you look at the other walls there, is an apprentice wall. I think that the other walls were done by a completely different uh, craftsman because they're actually quite decent. But this back wall... Um, wouldn't have had particularly good light and um, you know the guy could see it got some paint on it so that's all right and uh, they let the apprentice have a go look see look at the head and this body here and that one there <laughs> love it right now these are the hoha tombs um Again, it's another area nobody goes to, so it's quite nice to uh, get there. And the guardians are very, very welcoming. I have had many a cup of tea here. Um, the nice thing is that in this area, there are actually some shafts. They can actually lift up um, a, um, a sort of um, piece of wood. And you can see down, and you can see a mummy. And children love this. Uh, they really do. Um, inside this has got the most gorgeous ceiling pattern, which I'd love to steal and have painted in my house. So here it is. Um, this is Mart with her feather behind Ra Harakti. And this is Osiris with Isis behind him. She's got the chair on top of her head. Um, so, um, yeah, I know it's, it's not brilliant quality, but I, I do like these little things. They're, they're uh, quite interesting. Neferompet was a scribe in the Treasury of Armen, and there's lots of scenes of the Armen Temple and the Treasury. So that is very interesting to see. And um, rather than finishing some of his scenes, when he got to the corner, he sort of wrapped them round um, two walls. He's also got scenes of worship of Amon Hotep the first and Ahmed's Nefertari. Um, the these were uh, sort of like King Arthur or something like that. They were historical figures that had become patron saints of the Theban area. And quite a lot of people um, had 
worship of Amenhotep the First and Ahmed's Nefertari shown in their tombs, and there was quite a lot of that that went on in this area. So here it is. This is um, such a typical Osiris on his throne, four sons of Horus, Isis chair on top of her head, Nephti's upside down cake on top of her head, in a shrine with the weighing of the heart going on in front of them with Horus and Thoth. There's the little heart going on and you're going to be weighed and if you pass you get through to Osiris. This is the treasury and you see he's sitting there with his scribe's pallet in his hand and there's the bags of gold and the um, uh, uh, the bullion all waiting to be weighed um, and this is the area of the treasury so quite an interesting scene that you, you don't get to see a lot so that's the end of all our nobles tombs um, there's quite a lot of them uh, the photos again a lot of them have been taken from Kent Weeks' book because you can't get um, photos anymore. But uh, um, it's very worthwhile getting that book if you want some good colour photos. Our next module is the Valley of the Kings. And um, I'm sure you're all looking forward to that. So thanks for watching the Valley of the Nobles.